Good morning. Great to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, announcements. Uh, the flowers on the altar are given by Denise Burns in memory of her daughter. So we thank Denise for those flowers. They're beautiful. Also, uh, Barbara wanted us to remind everyone that we thank that she and Roy both thank you for the cards, the text, and the prayers during his procedure this week. You doing okay, Roy? Very good. Uh, also, over in the announcement section, uh, we will have a congregational meeting on the 14th for the election of the elders for the class of 2023. So that's upcoming. Any other announcements that I might not be aware of? Oh. That we're not going to do ladies lunch for a while. Right. The ladies' luncheons are canceled until further notice. All right, with that said, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Mighty God, everything you do reveals your glory and majesty. Open our eyes to see what you're doing in our lives. Let us marvel at your good gifts and your wise provision. Your acts are amazing, Lord. We cannot comprehend the number of blessings you pour out on us each day. As we gather today around your name, we pray that you would fill our hearts our minds, and our souls. Transform us, Lord, and make us more like you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. amen. Our opening hymn is How Great Thou Art, number four. We try. Come to our time for prayer concerns. Uh, anyone we need to mention in our prayer concerns? Nana? Doug and Ashley are traveling home today, and we'd like to say the travel mercies. Travel mercies. Any others? Peggy. Yes, Peggy. Caitlin's been sick, and we say prayers for her to get better. Okay, Caitlin. Any others? Okay. Anything else? 
If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer again. Faithful Father, we give you thanks. We ask that you be with each person mentioned here this morning and also those on our prayer list. Lift them up and supply their every need. Your love endures forever. It never fails. Though there are many ways in which we have failed, we have not ex exceeded the supply of your mercy and grace. We thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word. As we listen to the message today, we pray that we will hear your voice. We ask that your Holy Spirit will be at work, opening our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. May we be transformed into your likeness. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our communal prayer is printed in the bulletin. It's the Lord's Prayer, and we use sins and sinners. So please join me. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And at this time, please join me in a moment of silent prayer. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. We know that you hear each one and you act on each one. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Stacy has some special music for us this morning. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is the light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled and striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God and helpless babe, this gift of love, then righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world and darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me. For I am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, 
This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of christ i'll stand no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. With that, I guess we could just dismiss, couldn't we? <laughs> we won't do that. Joan wanted us to add a, another couple of individuals to our prayer group. Uh, the mother of Brenda Eddington died uh, this morning. And then the father-in-law of Dr. Taylor. So we'll be adding those to our prayer group as well. Um, Can I add one thing? Sure. Okay. I want to thank everyone for bringing the blankets and coats. You guys will make a huge difference in a lot of people's lives. Had a good group, didn't we? Again, this week, it's our pleasure to have back with us uh, to do our scripture reading and our message, Brother Tim Parrish. Tim, I'll turn it over to you. Good to be back here. Today's scripture reading is the parable of the mustard seed from Luke 13, chapters 18 and 19. Then he said, what is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? Jesus said, it is like a mustard seed which a man took and put in his garden, and it grew and became a large tree, and the birds of the air nested in its branches. Amen. Now, let me be real clear on something. That is considered the shortest gospel of the four apostles. And a mustard seed is the smallest seed. That's not why I chose the gospel or the seed. Okay, I just want to be clear on that. How many people in here have seen a mustard seed? They are T90. They are very small. If you have any kind of visual impairment like these, you'll have a hard time seeing them. It's the smallest of all seeds, that's what I read. Yet, it'll still grow into a tree. Heights vary, maybe 10 feet, maybe 14 feet, maybe three or four feet. It's the biggest of all herbal trees. Some grow into a bush and just of various colors. It takes about 80 to 95 days for it to grow into a standard size small tree. Like faith, it can and it will grow. You see, you, you plant the seed, you water it, you nourish it, you love it, and it grows. You nourish your faith and it will grow. But faith grows by more than just water and nourishment. You've got to work at it. It comes with challenges. Some are uh, really tough challenges. Some you can deal with. Others take a little bit longer. 
recovering from my wreck has challenged me in ways that I never imagined, never even gave any thought to. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, some of the things have been harder to deal with than others. But what has helped me deal with them is this growing sense of faith, which honestly, I didn't know I had. I knew I had faith. I knew I had faith in Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in God. But I don't think I'd ever been tested. Not really. So I had some challenges that I had to deal with and learn about. And I can tell you, nothing has been easy at all. So what, what can we do when we're faced with these challenges? And we feel like we are that T90 mustard seed. We don't feel that we have sprouted. We have grown. Oh, we're in the dirt. And we move around. But that's, that's not the same. Prayer is powerful. I learned the value of prayer from my mother. She, or she really believed in the power of prayer. She'd always say, prayer, Tim, can move mountains. And I listened and said, yeah, okay. You know how we are as teenagers, older teens, young adults. We listen, but we don't really listen. Well, I oftentimes saw my mother praying or reading from one of her favorite prayer books or reading from the Bible. Well, we can do those same things. We can talk to Jesus and we can talk to God. Now, don't hold your breath on getting the answers that you want or that you think you deserve. You'll be told what you need to know when you need to know it. And it may be a while. And, you know, maybe it won't come for some time. We can also look for ways to help other people. And it can be something as simple as a smile because you don't know the person you're smiling with may not have seen one in quite a while. And so it's, you, just, you just smile at somebody. You give them, you, you reinforce in them a belief that, well, there's somebody that cares. And they, they don't even know me. Why would they be smiling at me? In the course of the day, as we go about whatever it is we're going about doing, we'll have lots of opportunities to reach out and touch someone, to grow that seed, to make it a plant that will start out not much bigger than the floral arrangement right there. And then imagine something that kind or that size growing to 14 feet tall. That's enough to really kind of blow you away. Now you gotta use the special, there's plenty of different kinds of mustard seeds. So if you want the 14 footer, you gotta get the package of the 14 footers. We have numerous opportunities during the day 
to help someone in need. And, and sometimes it's when we least expect it and we don't think we have anything to add. But we do. We always have something to add. Two of the most powerful words in the world to me, okay, are thank you. Some, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> sometimes thank you, it may be the only prayer you say all day. It may be the only gift you give to somebody all day. But it means the world to the person that you say it to. And don't be put off if they forget to say you're welcome. Because you probably surprised the heck out of them when you said thank you. <laughs> when I was in the hospital and I would get a shot, I, I just, y'all may think I'm crazy for doing this. On the way out of the room, I would say thank you. And more than, more than one occasion, the nurse turned around and said, what? And I said, thank you. And on one occasion, she said, no one's ever thanked me for giving them a shot. I said, well, it make, makes a difference to me, makes me feel better. Not at the point that it's going in, though. <laughs> so if you want to raise some mustard seeds, I went online last night and I thought, where can you get some? Because spring's not really here, so I don't know if, uh, if Lowe's or Home Depot will have them. Publix has them. They'll come in a standard size little packet like you'd get garden seeds or vegetable seeds or something like that. Pour them into the palm of your hand very slowly because these little suckers will go flying out of there. I, I don't know how many are in there. They're too small to count. My guess would be that there's a hundred in there. But they just look like little brown specks. Something that I noticed last night when I was online and I was looking, well, where can I get some mustard seeds? Because I have tried this and uh, I overwatered them, so mine didn't make it. Um, at another church where I served, uh, one of the parishioners uh, grew one and, and hers got about two feet tall. And she forgot to tell her husband what that plant was. So it came to its end uh, with a weed eater. And uh, he's still alive and, th and they're still married. <laughs> but she was so kind of upset because she had just babied this plant so much. But as I'm looking at different places, I, I scroll down, and I, I just started smiling. There are pre-K and kindergartners, kindergartens all over the United States. What do you think most of them are called? The mustard seed. I thought, that was pretty cool. We have an opportunity every day to plant our own mustard seeds in honor of somebody, in memory of somebody, just for the fun of it. Let's see what it'll do. Let's see what it'll grow. They come in different colors and they'll grow to different heights. And I can assure you, you'll be pleased with what you get in the end. Thank you. Our hymn of invitation this morning is number 435, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Please stand.
as you will recall, we do not pass the offering plates anymore, so on your way out, feel free to put your offering in the plates on the altar. Our offertory sentence and benediction are all woven into one. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. That's from Numbers 6, 24 through 26. With that said, as I said before, you can put your tithes and offerings in the plates on the altar. You're dismissed.